Brandon with BeesusProductions.com here back after a long four months for video dev blog number six. Uh, I've got quite the extensive list of items to cover on this, so without further ado, let's start uh, crossing them off that list. So uh, first and foremost, here we'll hop in the game and I'll show you some simple improvements I've made. Uh, for example, uh, true analog controls. One thing that uh, people have become quite accustomed to after the years is the ability to finely tune how your player moves. So. Uh, I've gone ahead and kind of had a clever work around here. You go a little bit, and of course you walk, and you increase that, and you go to run. So, pretty minor, um, but yeah, there's still some little bugs to work out when you're kind of throttling between the two here. Our player gets a little confused about if he should walk or run, so I'll have to fine-tune that. But uh, needless to say, the speed itself is working as it should. The workaround for that was actually quite simple. Um, I'll hop in here and I will show you more or less what I did and basically we're just taking uh, the input axis from the controller and we're translating that to our acceleration so as our analog stick moves farther so to speak we will increase this number and multiply it by our typical acceleration here so this will vary depending on my character's situation. For example, if he has the ninja power up, if he's wall jumping, things like that. So we basically set our acceleration and air acceleration based off of this variable, which is defined by basically how far the analog stick is pushed and how fast our character is moving. So very simple little work around here, but it makes a big difference. Uh, in addition to that, I've also done a similar thing for the jump, whereby you're used to a lot of Mario games, you're used to tapping the jump button and getting a little jump. Well, that was impossible until I implemented a different way to jump. So now based on how, f how long you hold the button down, a quick tap will give you a little hop here, slightly more, and then of course, you know, the maximum. So yeah, it's uh, feeling pretty good now. So you should be able to make those little tiny gap jumps, you know, without having to go full bore each time. So it makes, a, again, a big difference for something so minor. But, uh, yeah, basically what I'm doing here is I'm... Uh, I forget what I was doing, actually. I implemented it quite a while ago. Um, I believe, in general, instead of just applying a, a flat force to my player, I was taking a ray cast while the jump button was held down, and once that ray cast reaches a certain length, I will cut off the jump. So... Uh, simple math, simple raycasts. Again, raycasts really do make or break the game in terms of the, you know, everything you can do. Uh, so in addition, I've altered my raycasts. Instead of using uh, the player's uh, basically grab box, so to speak, to calculate if we can do a wall jump or not, I am now actually doing a dynamic one based off of a raycast. So that same raycast that I use to gather the player's rotation to put them to the correct uh, angle, I'm using that to also calculate the surface normal in relation to the character's vector up. Basically to say if a if a wall you're jumping off of is greater than 85 degrees but less than 95 degrees, we will allow a wall jump. So no longer will I have to have uh, items tagged with a wall, so to speak, a wall tag in order for the player to jump off of them. It will pretty much all be dynamic now based off of the slope. So with this one in theory, we shouldn't be able to wall jump off of this, which we can't because it is obviously uh, not in that 85 to 95 degree range. So, uh, we will also focus on some little things here with the attack. I've kind of made it so that if the player's running, well, apparently it's not working here, but if the player's running into a wall, they will no longer run into the wall, as you can see here. So I'm still holding the direction of the player to run into the wall, but we're not moving. But you can still rotate off of it, so you won't get that effect of the player constantly running into a wall like you saw over here. I'm going to have to see why that doesn't work on this wall. I wonder if it has to do with... Oh, that's why, because this wall is tagged with wall. So I'll actually have to update that and change that, because right now it's detecting anything without a tag of wall to be, oh, we can't run into this, so we're going to stop running. So again, you can still rotate off of that, otherwise you'll get this effect. Uh, you may see here a little bit of flickering on the character as well. That's actually a shader I'm using for when the player's behind an object, we will show them with this outline. So a little thing, uh, I actually had to implement that for my side scroller section that I was working on and thought, oh crap, well I can't see the player when he's behind this wall, so let's give him a little ghost image here. Uh, in addition to that, I've also added a little thing here. If you punch or kick a wall, you know, my kick and... Well, first of all, the kick itself, 
you can tell now it's I made it so that it slows down the player significantly so they, they can't can't just run through the level constantly spinning with a kick so now when you kick it takes away a lot of your momentum so it'll prevent the player from spamming that you can still do this one if you want I believe that will uh, have the same effect but at the same time you're also not on the ground anymore so it'll be a little more difficult to hit enemies still a work in progress still fine-tuning but if the players up against the wall well that's got the incorrect tag excuse me we'll go over here again and I'll show you uh, another little detail here if you hit a wall we will knock the player back uh, there's gonna be a sound effect there as well so you know it's not just uh, gonna be him going derp into a wall so you come into a wall you kick it and you knock yourself away so another little detail to kinda make it feel like you actually hit something uh, I'm gonna add a camera shake to that as well but that's uh, again this is all still just uh, initial work in progress type, uh, stuff type here so uh, let me hop out here and I'll show you some changes I've made to enemies I've actually implemented numerous numerous uh, different enemy abilities how the hell did I get in that when I chose enemies alright we will throw for example uh, I think I had the ghost doing something crazy, and we will also put, I think it was the werewolf guy here, so, um, I've actually got a selectable ability, so, it, will the enemy chase the player, just simply pursue him, kind of like a Goomba and Mario, so to speak, shoot projectiles, that was like the dragons that you may have seen in previous episodes, they'll shoot a projectile at you, uh, either homing or direct shot. Uh, they'll charge the player, which I'll show you here, and teleport. So we'll hop in here and I'll show you how those work. We'll mix up some enemy enemy variety here instead of just simple derpy, you know, chase the player all the time. So uh, ghost pursues our player here. We hit the ghost and he will randomly teleport to a new spot. After so much time, you know, those are all variables that can be tweaked. Um, in, actually, in the inspector itself. So we basically just have him find a new position, kind of like a, a kind of a fear type thing you know get away from the player because he hit me type deal and this guy over here will actually charge our player based off his current location right now I just have him uh, changing his shader color to uh, basically lerp over to red after uh, he's ready to charge here so it's all based off of where the current or players position currently is you know of course so once he initiates that charge well he done killed himself there as you can also see our enemies spawn coins which are actually rigid bodies as well so uh, yeah this is lava <laughs> as long as we're here you hop in it you jump out you take damage simple as that so these uh, this will affect uh, enemies this will affect pretty much everything anything with a health script that touches it so if we throw another generic type enemy here I can show you that you can basically lure these guys right into the uh, traps so one of the traps obviously you just saw here was lava not too smart. They take damage. They die. Simple as that. Let's restart. And I... Oh, actually, I had a respawn here, as you can see as well. All right. We'll get you out of the way. We'll get you. And, yeah, you'll see here, uh, based off of how the enemy dies, you jump on them, they die immediately. But if you hit them, they kind of have a little fly back and then die after they kind of, you know, pop back. So gives a little variety, again, to just generally an enemy popping as soon as you hit it, much like this one. Otherwise, I'll take this guy over here and I will show you a sand trap I made as well. You hit the sand, you drown. Uh, simple as that. Affects enemies as well. Mr. Enemy died. We'll hop in here and we will die as well. We'll slowly sink in and pop. So yeah, the shader obviously kind of gives it away as to how I'm handling it, but I can update that uh, no problem, hopefully later. Uh, anyway, I believe I had a number of resets here on that enemy that you can no longer see. That's why he may not be respawning. I actually forgot. As um, long as we're here, let us hop over to here. We'll get this little guy out of the way. Oops. And yep, and there's our rigid body popping out. Collector, she's a coin. Uh, this was originally going to be kind of something that rotated and launched the player forward. I don't know why I wall jumped there. That is kind of interesting. I wonder if it was a hung collider or something. But uh, either way. Uh, this used to just kind of spin around, and after the player would jump in, they would basically launch forward out of whichever direction it was facing. Well, that wasn't too intuitive, or that wasn't actually too much fun initially. So I actually kind of changed this, inspired by Mario Galaxy. Player hops in, and we basically fly along a path over to a destination, and we land. So it'll kind of be a teleport the player in a fancy way, you know. Uh, talk to this guy to activate it for example and those lights or the, the blinking here obviously won't happen until it's activated so once you activate it this will be used to launch the player to different locales uh, again it just follows a simple 
a spline and uh, puts the player right where we need to. A uh, player can't move in that time. I'm still working on what I want to do with the camera, if I want the camera to stay behind the player, if I want the player to be able to rotate it, for example. But uh, otherwise, uh, that was kind of inspired by uh, the initial uh, actions of that were repurposed into a cannon. So as you can see here, we got ourselves a cannon. We can point it wherever we want the player, and when we launch, our player fires out, whichever direction it was facing. Part of the reason I was, oh, that obviously wasn't right, so that should have uh, not given him fall damage. One of the things I'm doing with the cannon is preventing it from giving the player fall damage. Obviously, you'd just be killing yourself by shooting yourself. So, you know, you can shoot yourself whichever direction you're pointing, and it, it basically will uh, take the place of that launcher over there, but require that the player have some input as to, you know, aiming toward a platform so you know we're not going to go far enough to get this platform but we'll come pretty darn close so uh beyond that a lot of other changes in scenes i can delete these guys out we do not need them a uh, lot of progress here on our second scene uh the first level hasn't changed much i've still been kind of fine-tuning things in there but uh, a lot of the work in the second level is done here this one's going to kind of be a, a castle uh, inspired medieval type level but also not you know too serious in its nature in that uh, it's not going to be dark and dank. It's going to be more of an exploratory type castle, if that's a word. So let us... Oop, this is actually the side scroll section within that level. So to mix things up, we're going to have a whole little side scroll section here, uh, which I can actually show you once I hop back into the main level here. So this is our main level. Castle's still a work in progress. Detail's still a work in progress, but the general... Uh, layout and overview of everything is done here so when the player will actually come in our castle here I'm already set up in this point uh, as you can see our castle isn't finished yet it's just kind of you know loosely modeled in here with a lot of detail stuff but still working on details uh, obviously work in progress so you'll have to forgive those but I'll show you here our player will drop in and we will be taken over to our side scroll section the first one that I will have in the game uh, mix up gameplay again nothing too special but kind of changes things up. Our enemies are going to be set to stay on this axis as well as our coins. That way when you kill an enemy you don't have coins flying off the level on you. Uh, this is just again loosely boxed in here so to speak. I've updated my swimming, I've updated everything to work with uh, the side scroll sections. As you can see this was the inspiration for the shader itself. Players behind this wall here and you can still see where they are. Uh, I've added spike traps, you hit them, you die. I need to obviously still instantiate those things uh, properly and pool them. That way you don't get that delay when you pop on them. But uh, yeah, we get a little blood splatter, player dies, and uh, he's not too happy. He respawns at our last checkpoint. So I will hop through here, and I will show you a couple other things I've added as well. Uh, ledge grabbing does work. Oh, that's one thing I will cover actually later. Ledge grabbing is basically working at this point. Uh, here's a little steam vent, kind of pushes the player away. Anyway, ledge grabbing is basically working. I'll show you that in the 3D section. I've got it to the point where I can pretty well have it detect consistently the proper angles and proper heights so that it all works. So this is my crushing, uh, my crusher, so to speak. This is much like the other traps in that it affects all rigid bodies. So you pick this box up, you throw her there, and pop. So this was a kind of a pain to come up with. I couldn't just put a damage script on it because if I did, uh, the player could basically just jump into this part and get hurt as well. That didn't work. So I had to detect while the player was, you know, standing on the ground. So there's basically a trigger on the ground here, if I can hop over to it. There's a trigger on the ground here for these things. Yep, crusher base, there it is. When the player is on this trigger, and if they're standing on it and they collide with this top part, basically, it inflicts an instant death. So again, it was kind of difficult to come up with that because the simplest way is say just put damage on it. Well, that doesn't work because, again, if our player jumps into this part, well, without getting pushed down, uh, basically, yeah, he could jump into the top part if it wasn't moving so quick and still not take damage unless he was also touching the ground on that one. So we'll just hop back over to here. I probably should have uh, planned out and put like a checkpoint or something there in the meantime. But uh, yeah, so our player can lead enemies into those traps. Our player can maybe put some, uh, throw some unbreakable boxes underneath those to pop them out. And uh, yeah, yeah, again, it's a lot of fun to lure enemies into that. Well, that's not going to work. So we're just going to change this here quick because I don't want to keep wasting time. 
uh, trying to run through that. I know you can. I've done it many a times. Um, but otherwise, I also introduced a, a, a kind of ball launcher here. Balls will come streaming out of this thing. Rigid bodies bounce down the ground, bank off walls, and again, they're locked to the Z-axis so they don't go flying off the side of the level here. And uh, hit the ground here, fall down to the water, and die. So, um, yeah, that's basically our side scroll section. Nothing too fancy, but uh, kind of mixes up gameplay a bit here. Oh, I've added these spike traps as well. These guys will animate up and down on a timer. So basically they'll go underneath the ground, they'll pop up a little bit, and then immedi almost uh, immediately after that, to kind of give the player a warning, they'll pop up fully, you know, so that way the player can see they're just popping up a little bit and kind of get out of the way. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it for that. I've covered pretty much everything else I can think of, at least in this level. I will actually hop back to the test level here and show you the ledge grabbing as well as a couple other little things here. So, I've added a new type of collectible as well, something that actually increases the player's maximum health. Uh, that one I accidentally collected before, that's what these pluses are. If you collect three of them, you will get another point of health. So, we'll collect that one, we'll collect that one, and pop, we're up to 11. So that'll be used to increase players' maximum health, much like the empty honeycombs were in Banjo-Kazooie. I will make a lot of references to these games because they're a lot of the inspiration that served for this game. Uh, beyond that, uh, let's see here. I'm just kind of looking at my list of what else to cover. Oh, ledge grabbing dirt. All right, so we'll hop over here. I'm still working on how I'm going to tag objects to be grabbable, but uh, player hits it. Well, that's a placeholder animation, of course. That's not going to be final. That's more or less to distinguish when the player will grab it. Uh, that way, from my visual reference, I can see, yep, he should be having a ledge grab here. And you pull yourself up, and there you go. So you can drop down, you can pull yourself up. Uh, it works on pretty much anything that I tag with a box collider. So, uh, again, I may still fine-tune that. I played around with uh, doing a ray cast to get the ledge position instead, but I couldn't get it to work consistently. I still find using a trigger... Uh, on trigger enter basically for objects detects it more consistent so nothing else on these there's no triggers in terms of the player grabbing the ledge there's nothing to say you know there, there, there's no box around the ledge here uh, why am I keep going out in the void here there's no boxes as you can see to designate these objects they're just an object with a box collider so I actually owe a thanks to I forget his name uh, I have his email in here somewhere but uh, thanks to somebody for the help with that. It was just a matter of me changing my code to look for the collider size instead of the bounds extents. So a simple little stupid thing that needed to be changed, but uh, it's working quite consistently, and a big thanks to, uh, I'll add it at the end here, I'll actually add a little annotation at this video as to who I'm uh, thanking here for the assistance with that. But uh, otherwise, um, that's about it in terms of the platforming. I've done a couple other little test things as well. Uh, added a kind of a ball, so to speak, a rolling ball as kind of my, my side mini game, so to speak. It's, uh, I guess you could say sort of like Super Monkey Ball, whereby you're going to roll the player or roll a character around here and after you reach the goal it pops them out. So, oh, excuse me again, I just made a quick little kind of test scene here. You know, you point the direction, you go. Uh, I did change the camera here, whereby instead of kind of rotating around the player now, when you hit the button it goes to a 90 degree snap, so to speak. So, you know, less that the player has to worry about here. Less uh, less worrying about the camera, so to speak, and more just focusing on trying to get from point A to point B to pop that open. So, yeah, there's our checkpoints. When you hit a checkpoint, it despawns the other one. Uh, pretty much everything's working for this. You jump off the edge. No matter where the camera is, it resets to behind the player. A lot of math involved with that, or a lot of simple math that took a lot of thought, so to speak, in terms of how I wanted it to work, but... You know, again, it didn't take that long, but uh, it did give me kind of a, a working side mini game, so to speak. And in addition, I updated my cart mechanics as well. Uh, the cart had kind of a weird feel before. It wasn't quite as Mario Kart esque, so to speak, as I wanted. But uh, you know, again, just kind of a side mini game thing here. I'm going to have to remember. Oop, I don't have the control set proper. But yeah, I basically have, well I can't remember what the controls are now, because I have to hold up right now, which doesn't feel good on the analog stick, but uh, 
I basically have it so that the sliding feels more slidey when you're actually doing a power slide now. So you can kind of, you know, have more control going around corners and things like that. So just need to update my inputs, obviously, to work with the analog triggers, because right now I have to hold up and turning while holding up doesn't work. Uh, what I basically did here was uh, kind of swapped out the cart mechanics from the start, and now when you power slide, I also apply a minor force, which actually lurks to the player's transform forward so it kind of captures where you're at in time and slowly lurps to where it thinks you want to go in terms of which analog or which direction you're pushing so it'll slowly apply a force in that direction a gentle force so to speak to keep you moving even while you're sliding so that way you you don't come to a complete stop while your tires are hung here so again you can turn much sharper but i keep having to hold up in order to uh make the turns right now because my controls aren't right so yeah it, it's actually going to allow you to turn much sharper if i didn't have to hold up in the whole in the whole uh turn there so um yeah that about sums it up for dev blog video six and hopefully i should get a little more frequent with these uh it's just kind of been a little busy in my life here i'm not going to bore you with details but uh yeah i've just had more time to kind of do some minor coding at work actually but don't tell my boss uh then i probably should so I don't really have too much time at home anymore so I kind of have to take advantage of whatever time I have there so you know breaks lunches things like that and uh, that's kind of what's been accomplished since uh, since my last video dev vlog so uh, without too much other information to add here I will wrap things up and hopefully we'll be seeing you again real soon for video dev vlog number seven and or a different type of video take care bye